Okay, it's day 141. This is part one. And I get a lot of comments uh, where people say, gee, it's, it seems like this is taking forever. We're not making any progress. It, this, is, this is hard, etc. What I would say is I compare this to a chess game versus a checkers game. This isn't going to be a three-minute checkers game. What you're doing is you're dealing with groups of people like John Brennan and a whole bunch of staff that's connected with CIA folks and so forth that are trying to influence the White House through people like Susan Rice, uh, and they're trying to also influence people like uh, Andy McCabe at FBI and over people over at DOJ, where they've infiltrated pretty much everywhere. So they've got unlimited resources, and they're going to tell their story over and over, remaking their story and narrative over and over. So what you have to do is analyze what they say, realize who the people are that are saying it, Michael Isakoff and David Korn, the two key people that are paid off by Fusion GPS and the two uh, spin doctors for uh, Mr. Brennan here. And then, but you take what they say, uh, the key elements, you rinse all the spin off. And what you're left with is after you rinse all the mud off, you're left with the diamonds, which they give you the metadata. Then with the metadata, you turn right around and ask for more evidence. You go to a Devin Nunes and say, hey, these were the key people involved in the spying, for instance, on Trump. And we asked them when they first came about the knowledge of Christopher Steele. When did they first know who the Russian spies were, et cetera? And this is, and I'll show you exactly what I mean. Um, so in, in a sense, it's chess. You have to wait for the move of the opponent before you can then respond. Um, and you don't, in chess, you don't get to play three moves ahead without the opponent responding. So again, uh, I'll go to the uh, key parts. You're going to have a whole bunch of stuff here that says, Oh, you know, we were all incredible, and, and uh, you know, we knew about the Russian hack of the DNC a year earlier, even though there's no metadata to support that, or else there are hired hackers that are on the actual DNC uh, payroll, right? But then we're going to get down here to some juice, and what, and what I look for is entities. Here's uh, the people that were involved in getting the sensitive information at the State Department about the Russian hack. John Kerry, Tony Blinken, and Dan Smith. Now, I think of this as almost Winken, Blinken, and Nod. None of these names seem really, tr you know, uh, like real names. And then John Finer. But there, there we go. We just got four names right there as far as people. Now, Devin Nunes can send them a 10-question memo. When did you first come to know Christopher Steele? When did you first come to know uh, even this Kripal, uh, uh, Skripal guy who was poisoned? You know, if he... Uh, tweets out all the people that were on working for Orbis and Christopher Steele. Now we have a whole bunch of other FSB agents that we can pursue. Okay, so, and then we get further down here, and again, this is the payoff meeting. This is known as the principles meeting. No plus ones. A plus one is kind of like an attache. No plus ones were invited. Here's the key people. It's going to be Clapper, Ash Carter, Jay Johnson, Jack Lou, I, as always, Jack Lou, um, Loretta Lynch, Dunford, who appears to be changing sides now. Um, and then you're going to have this Dennis McDonough. I've said it before. These are the real power players, Dennis McDonough and Jack Lou, by the way, as always, as I've said from the beginning. Lisa Monaco, uh, Colin Kral, uh, which Joe Biden's uh, guy. And then there's going to be a couple other guys, um, you know, Avril Haynes, and then there's this Dan Prado. Okay, well, right there, they gave us the juice. They buried this in the middle to keep people's eyes off of this, is who actually was there on this August 16th meeting or whenever it was. But this is the famous stand-down meeting, okay? This is where they're assessing that, oh, the Russians are hacking us. Now what do we do? And then they uh, later have a meeting with Dan Prado way down the list here in the article um, where he says, you know, this is a street fight against the Russians. You know, they, they want to uh, bring out this, colorful imagery that somehow there's cyber hacking as a street fight. And what it actually is, here we go, what it actually is, is them going into databases, NGP van databases, and deleting out evidence of uh, SEIU uh, Tonys and SEIU janitors, the alpha males and the beta males, and the alpha alpha splitters and the, and the beta stringers. That's what's happening when they're going into the databases and they're trying to cover that activity. 
Now, whether I go commandeer a, a, a server in Estonia to do my attack doesn't really matter. I'm in Centreville. I'm going to a little uh, Centreville place, a uh, little pub that's close by uh, when I'm doing these attacks. And I'm meeting every day over at the Y uh, Institute over in Maryland. I'm not in, I am a part of the DNC. I'm not in uh, Estonia or wherever these attacks are supposed to have come from. The Umbridge attacks can make it look like I attack from anywhere in the world, but I can assure you that the Russians here are over in Centreville. And every time I say that, they say, stop saying that because that's the truth. So this is the, uh, the basis of the stand down meeting. Every time they put something out, especially David Korn and Michael Isakoff, it's almost like uh, uh, airline or airway runway lights to the actual truth. There's always the one payoff paragraph. There's always the one juice paragraph. And if you just read it for that, they basically lead you right to the target.